Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. It's always a pleasure having you tune in for today. And uh, today we're going to be looking at Psalm 24. I've got a question for you, and that is, what do you do when you've had enough? And I'm not talking about you've had enough in and out burger, or you've had enough pizza or ice cream, and you've had enough of your meal and you push back. But what do you do when you've had enough of what life continues to dish at you? Maybe you have had enough pain or frustration. Maybe you've had enough of life kicking you and you're down. Maybe you've had enough of the struggle that just keeps going. Maybe you've had enough of the illness that you just keep wandering through and struggling with. What do you do when you've had enough? Because as humans, we have all kinds of coping mechanisms and things that we turn to in those times. Maybe you just get reclusive and you pull away from everything and just want to kind of escape from the world around you. Maybe you escape into technology and then this scrolling that exists on the apps that we have access to today. Maybe it's that you live in anger and bitterness towards the things that cause you to have had enough. Maybe it's even that it causes you to turn to vices that you know are destructive and addictive and don't help you in that. And I ask this because all of us experience those times of being fed up and having enough and feeling weary and overwhelmed and burdened. And it's not exclusive to the Psalms either. Because see, in Psalm 123, we're going to look at, I want to read the the last half. It's only four verses here, so we're going to read the entire chapter. Uh, But I want to read the the last half of this. Starting verse 3, it says, Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. They're weary. They're frustrated. They're overwhelmed. They are burdened. They've had enough. But the beginning of this psalm, I think, is so insightful for us as well. Because it starts this way. It says, To you I lift my eyes, O you who are enthroned in heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, the eyes of the maidservant at the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to our God till he has had mercy on us. See, in the midst of a feeling weary and frustrated and overwhelmed and burdened, the psalmist says, but I'm going to fix my eyes. I'm going to look to you like you're the only thing that matters, the only thing that I need to pay attention to, the only thing that I really need to focus on is you. And I think that can be so powerful for us because we can get so fixated on the struggle, on the thing that overwhelms us, on the thing that, that weighs heavy on our soul, that maybe we forget to fix our eyes on Jesus. As Hebrews says, the author and perfecter of our faith, we're to look to him and fix our eyes on Jesus because he's the only one that matters. We need to to fix our eyes on Jesus whenever we are experiencing those times of being overwhelmed and being fed up and feeling like we just can't keep going because he can help us keep going. He can give us the strength on those days where we've just reached the end of ourselves, He can give us the wisdom to navigate situations that overwhelm us. He can give us the help to navigate things that crush our spirit and, and overwhelm us emotionally. He can help us navigate that. But none of those other things can. It's so easy for us, again, to escape, to try and numb those feelings, to try and run away from them, or to lean into the unhealthy ones of anger and bitterness and unforgiveness from our circumstances. So let me encourage you today to fix your eyes on Jesus, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling like you've had enough of what our world continues to throw at us. Fix your eyes on Jesus, understanding that our hope is in Him, not in a perfect circumstance here, not in our life being flawless on earth, but our hope is on Jesus and the hope that if our faith is in Him, that we have eternal hope, that one day we'll be with Him in a place where we won't have enough, We won't have be fed up and frustrated and overwhelmed and burdened, but we'll be full of joy and peace and full of praise for our King in heaven. So today, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.